Hi, welcome to how to create a drill down part one. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you basically how to create a UI that drills down on a data set. So here we have our UI and here is our block of data. The data is made up of six different fields. So if we go back into our drill down menu and select sales rep, you can see that we have basically a pivot table. The drill down menu is a lot like a pivot table. It, it can't do quite as much as a pivot table, but what it can do is look better than a pivot table. A pivot table can be kind of ugly, and if people aren't familiar with them, they might struggle with how it works and stuff like that. So this is sort of a UI for someone who may not be that great at Excel. So let's, let's go over what this does. So here we have our sales data between the dates of January 1st, 2012 and September 1st, 2012. Gill is currently selected, but I can go in here and go ahead and select. Let's take a look at Jones. Okay, so Jones has 13,897 sales in revenue. And if I want to see uh, the breakdown per item, obviously I could select item here, but also I could select region as well. Well, which region did he do the best? And as you can see here, he did best in the West. So for instance, if I sum this and I go ahead and highlight this, you'll see that it um, sums up to 13,897, which uncoincidentally is the amount of total sales. So if I look at that and I go, well, let's look at the West and I go to my drop down over here and select West, West gets highlighted. And then I go into item because I want to see the items that Jones sold in the West. I would go here. And here's the breakdown of items. And the cool thing about this is you can actually do this in any order. So um, if I wanted to go to item here, here's my list of items, all that were sold. And if I want to look at binders and then see the sales reps that sold them, I can do that. So you can really organize it any way you want. The other neat thing about this is that you can actually change the uh, values you're looking at. So currently we're looking at revenue, but what if I wanted to see units? Then I'm looking at units per binder and then the amount of units each person sold. So uh, anyway, I hope you enjoy this video. This is going to be part of, uh, you know, I'm not sure if it's going to be a two-part series or a three-part series, but I'm guessing it'll be a three-part. Uh, in this video, we're going to go over the formatting, just how to create this, how to create the drop-downs, which is data validation, how to create this sort of button look with the uh, slight color change. And then also we're going to do something with our named ranges. So here's our data. And the data is measured by these named ranges that we use in our formulas. So if I click into here, you can see that the whole column is being accounted for by that range. And the idea behind that is that this data is growing. Most data does because it's either being fed by some sort of data feed or some sort of database, we want our ranges to grow as well. So that, that way we don't have to keep maintaining our formulas. Um, all right, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that I did was I made this whole thing white. And I started it by figuring out what my data was saying. So I needed to kind of think about all of the columns that I wanted to sit, switch through, as well as all of the columns I wanted to sum on. And because we have two columns that are aggregate or numbers, I wanted to have first data validation dropdown be represented by essentially allow the data validation to switch from units to revenue. Okay, so that'll be the first one. This one is going to be units and revenue. And what's the second one going to be? Well, because we have three other string fields, we're essentially going to have three uh, three layers of drill. Put that together and then this cell is going to be my selection cell. So of the items that appear here, this will be the one that's able to select it. This will be another build and you can actually use this really cool thing called Format Painter. Use that right there. Okay, so that's basically what it's going to look like. Um, the other thing we're going to have to do is uh, color these. I like to make my drop downs have a sort of uh, texture to them. I like to have two colors that merge. It kind of gives them sort of a bubble effect. 
Obviously, you can do this any way you want. I'm gonna go fill effects, maybe a green and a dark green. Color of money. Okay, and then uh, maybe for this one, uh, blue and white. That looks good. Okay, I'll take this, I'll format paint, format paint again, and do the same with this. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have our date cells. So we're gonna have a start, a start date. Go ahead and write justify that. An end date, which I'm also going to write justify. And then I'm gonna square this in. So that gives the look of something needing to be filled. And I think that's pretty much all you need. That's the basic formatting. So I guess the next thing we need to do is create our data validation. Okay, so now we need to create our data validation. So how you do that is you can go Alt A for data, V for validation, and then V again for validation. Tab L for list. And then our source for the list will be in our data tab. We're gonna use region, sales, and item. Click OK. So this is our first one, and each one of these will have this exact dropdown. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this and paste it three times. And all of, and the data validation got copied as well. So for this one, uh, data validation again, we're actually gonna go to units and revenue because that is gonna be our dropdown that toggles between what we're aggregating or what we're summing together. I'll click okay. So this will allow us to toggle between what kind of data we're looking at, and then this will allow us to toggle between uh, basically what fields we're looking at. Um, these data validations will be looking at our current things, so these will do a little bit later. Okay, so the next step would be to create our ranges. So named ranges are created in the name manager, which is uh, can be brought up with Control F3. But unfortunately, writing formulas in this uh, UI doesn't really work out very well because UI doesn't give you any formula hints, so it's, it's really no fun. So here we're gonna use a match function. We're gonna look up the value one. Our lookup array is gonna be in this A through A column, and our match type is gonna be one. Okay, our match type is actually negative one. We're looking for one, A through A, negative one is our match type. Basically like saying, find me the first cell that does not have the value one. All right, so what does that do? That brings us our final cell reference, which is all the way down here to 661, and that is going to be part of our reference. So what we can do is, if we're talking about sales rep region or item, we would go two through B661. However, because those things vary, we actually need to uh, create another match function, and that is gonna sit within an address function. So we just made our uh, one of our row numbers. We're gonna put two. Our column number is actually going to be a match function. And what are we gonna look up? Well, we're gonna look up our region. Our lookup array is going to be right here a horizontal array, and our match is going to be exact. Um, okay, so this is my column number, this is my row number. Let's see what that does. So I'm gonna close that out, and yeah. okay, so it says B2661, so B would be region, and if we look back here, it's we're pointing at region, which is perfect, and 661, uh, that's okay too. So we'll actually have to make another address. So we're gonna go B2, quote, uh, ampersand, quote, through, ampersand. So we're gonna have to do another one of those address functions. So I'm gonna go address, I'm gonna match my uh, row number, which is made right there. And then my column number is gonna be this same exact formula that we did for the first part of the reference. Okay. Let's see if that worked. Okay, so B2 through B661, perfect. So if I go back here and I change this to item, D2 through D661, and uh, that's exactly what we need. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and go through these and 
make these absolute references. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is just copy this a few times and point this at the other menus. So And this one is J15. So if I go in here and I change these to a value. Okay, so perfect. So we have B, C, and D. They're all represented. We need to put an indirect function around it. So what indirect does is it takes a text and it converts it into a actual cell reference, or in this case, a range reference. So I'm going to put indirect around it, indirect, okay so now I can copy this formula and go into my named manager, new, I'm going to call it big range one, I paste that formula in and let's see what happens, perfect, okay so that formula is creating our range it should go all the way down to 661. Okay, so I'm going to do the exact same for the other ones. I'm going to call it big range 2 and big range 3. Okay, so now that all of my ranges are made, and if we look at them, they should all be referencing the correct reference. I can actually um, make my other ranges now. So my other ranges would be our sum ranges, and the sum range will actually depend on uh, the item selected in this drop-down. So for instance, if I go ahead and delete these and I use my match formula, my address and match formula, my row number is going to be two and my column number is going to be a match that we're gonna look up right in cell C10. I'm going to make that an absolute reference. My lookup array is going to be here, also an absolute reference, and it's going to be zero. So if I close that off, F2. So now we want F2 through, so I always separate my text with an ampersand with my formulas, and then uh, I'm going to have something very similar except I'm going to use my A through A function right here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this match, paste it, and this is actually I'm going to convert my lookup value to a 1, my lookup array to A through A. I'm going to make that a permanent reference and then my match type to be a negative 1. Okay, so F2 through F66, and if I change that to units, you'll see that it went to E2 through E66. So these ranges are actually both, um, <clears throat> these ranges are dynamic horizontally and vertically, because we have made, with the match function, we have made them able to switch between columns and be able to grow as our data set expands beyond 661. So I'm going to wrap this with an indirect INDI tab. And then I'm going to go here into F2 mode or edit mode by pressing F2, copy that. And my new range is going to be called big sum range. I like that, and it should give me uh, my sum range, which is perfect. Okay, so uh, this has been the first video of how to create a drill down menu. Uh, keep following along to the second video. I know this was uh, pretty tedious, and uh, trust me, it only gets more tedious, but um, it'll be worth it in the end. It's a great UI. You can impress your boss with it, uh, hopefully. All right, thanks for watching. Again, email me at xlsxgeek at gmail.com if you have any questions, or better yet, leave a comment below. Thanks again.